My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. I do want to make friends. I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, to teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. What were some of the greatest investments this quarter? After a solid final day, Dow advanced 217 points, putting up its strongest quarterly performance since 1987. S&P climbed 1.54%, also its best quarter since, 80, since 1998. And NASDAQ gained 1.87% and looked fantastic. I'd say the most impressive stocks from my point of view now, okay, this is my own point of view, from the last few months were the ones with a lot of ingenuity and a lot more good luck. Oh, we had tons of winners this quarter. Many of them were stocks that simply bounced back from the March meltdown thanks to the $2.2 trillion stimulus package and the Federal Reserve's corporate bond buying program and a resurgent oil price. A lot of them were oil stocks. These are, ah, these companies got lucky. A lot of these companies look like goners in March, and then the government intervened. Suddenly, they were worth a lot more money. But it didn't take any ingenuity for Carnival Cruise or Royal Caribbean to rebound from their lows. They were saved by the Fed. No. I want to talk about the companies that have shown they can survive and now thrive during this pandemic and show no signs of abating at all, at least in the U.S. If anything, it's getting worse. Yeah, the pandemic's getting worse because millions of people refuse to take the virus seriously. They wouldn't wear the mask. They even objected to it, some of the guys on Capitol Hill today. Uh, They wouldn't adhere to social distancing guidelines. That's foolish. And now they've got huge breakouts all across the South and West. So let me give you my list of COVID winners that can keep dominating their industries even after the scourge is put to bed. And it will be. Now, first... Sometimes you got to go with the obvious Zoom video. Uh, there were many other outfits that could have become the leading video conferencing play. Cisco has WebEx for the enterprise. Ring Central rolled out their solution in partnership with Avaya. But it was Zoom that brought us together under the leadership of CEO Eric Yuan. When you think about it, Microsoft could have done this. Apple, Google, right? It's incredible to me that this newly public company has become so ingrained in the new, the new uh, work-from-home economy and also play-at-home economy. Zoom has fundamentally changed the way we interact, and our world will never be the same, even if we get a vaccine. Sure, if it wasn't them, it would have been somebody else, but it wasn't somebody else. It was Zoom. Second's PayPal. Oh, these guys were lucky enough to be the online merchant processor of choice for many companies going into the pandemic. And PayPal is now emerging as the de facto bank for small to medium-sized businesses around the world. They've taken the payments industry by storm. PayPal shows you really don't need brick and mortar banks. I never would have thought we'd go from cash to plastic to digital this quickly. But the pandemic threw more fuel on the fire, and that's where we are. CEO Dan Schulman has a vision. He wants to democratize money, and he's making that vision reality. Third is Apple. Now, this was still one more quarter where CEO Tim Cook's leadership dazzled, despite international tensions and the closure of most of the retail network. I know we weren't expecting much from the iPhone 11. I mean, another update, who cares? But people love it, and they love the AirPods. The the new watch is fantastic. Um, No, I'm not going to help you, Siri. Um, It's icing on the cake. The real core of the story is Apple's rapidly growing service revenue stream. What about the luck component? Well, in a year where we're not supposed to touch at each, each other, Cook's rolled out contactless credit cards. I think the App Store's worth billions. The fabulous customer satisfaction means that Apple likely owns its customers for life with the value that can now be subscribed to each and every one of them. And I'm going to keep pushing Apple to give me that number. It'll make multi your fortunes with that razor, razor blade business bottle. You know how I feel about this one? I say, own it. Don't trade it. Everybody else says trade it, don't own it. They're wrong. Fourth, out of nowhere, Tesla became a $200 billion company. How is that possible? Simple. Tesla's not a car company. It's a technology company. It happens to make autos. That was the wisdom of Elon Musk, and it's why Tesla's now approaching the valuation of Toyota, the largest automaker on Earth. I think it's a crummy comparison, though. A Tesla's not a Toyota. Musk cars sell everywhere. And they sell without advertising. They love it in China. They love it in Germany. They're really the only truly successful electronic vehicle company. 
Once it became clear that Musk could raise as much money as he needed to keep expanding, which was at 270, the stock was off the races and it hasn't looked back since. Fifth, we know Amazon had a ridiculously good quarter, but I like the rise of Shopify. It's the alternate system for small to medium-sized businesses that want to operate online. At the beginning of the quarter, Shopify was an obscure e-commerce enabler. By the end, though, they were recognized as a pillar of digital infrastructure in a time when everybody needs to go digital. You see that FedEx number tonight? That's about digitization. I bet Shopify will create more millionaires than any other company in America, and they're Canadian. Six, we've got some others that empower small business. Twilio, I, I saw Jeff Lawson on today. Fastly, I know there's a lot of people crazy about that one. Adobe, Wix, all small operators, uh, uh, move, they all help smaller operators move things online and look like big operators. Same with Etsy. They're prevented a host of retailers from going under. Seven, speaking of retail, oh my God, is this Lululemon's moment or what? They capture the zeitgeist of what we wear when you're at home. That mirror acquisition gives them a piece of the home fitness space, lets them rival Peloton. Many hedge fund managers bet against these stocks, they failed. Remember, these winners are all about luck and ingenuity. Lulu was lucky to be in the right place at the right time, but they were also darn smart. Eighth, we got all sorts of powerful secular themes tied to the stay-at-home economy. That's everything from the data center to artificial intelligence to gaming. Only one company gives you all these end markets. NVIDIA. I love this one. CEO Jensen Wong, he's out of this world. He's an engineer. He's a builder. He's a leader. He's an artist. This guy's a modern da Vinci. Jensen, man, I got to hand it to you. Ninth, you want luck and ingenuity? How about Netflix? This is another company that, like Amazon, was practically tailor-made for the pandemic. As we get more big screens, we get faster broadband. As every other form of entertainment shuts down, the world turns to Netflix. Now, this one's had a lot of doubters, thanks to all these competing streaming services. But now the company's in a place where it can raise prices with little resistance. No wonder it's such a juggernaut. Finally, and I really want to make this point, okay, we cannot forget Regeneron which has proven itself as the drug company for the COVID era. They've got an amazing anti-cholesterol franchise, the best macular degeneration treatment out there, fantastic oncological portfolio, but most important, Regeneron is leading the way, although they don't promote it, I am the way in the fight against the pandemic. A lot of companies are coming out with different stuff. Focus on these guys. They got a key uh, part of a monoclonal antibody cocktail that should be able to defeat the scourge, and they'll be able to charge an arm and a leg for it, like we've seen from Gilead's COVID drug. I also think Regeneron's got the inside track when it comes to making vaccine, given their work on Ebola. You should know that Len Schleifer and George Yankopoulos, the CEO and the chief scientist, are unheralded geniuses. Len was our first guest on Mad Money. Stock was at five. It's now 623. Bottom line, there are a ton of other winners I could have cited, but these are the companies that grabbed the moment it, 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 by the horns and rode the bull to greatness. And with COVID spreading like wildfire, sadly, I bet these keep climbing or I wouldn't have picked them. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.